Shalom, everybody. God bless you. Hope you are having an incredible day. Gilad Rossinger here, coming to you live from the Radiant Israel office in Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, it's just an absolute blessing to be able to communicate uh, with you guys all that the Lord is doing in this hour. Um, I'm blessed. I'm blown away by the favor and the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the favor of God, hallelujah. Uh, his presence and his spirit has been so strong um, on me the last couple of days. And I wanna share with you some powerful words that he has downloaded into my spirit. And I think this is gonna be a really powerful time. Uh, I'm not gonna be on long. I'm gonna keep this short, focused, concise, but listen, the word of God is alive, it's active, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. And we're gonna talk about that a bit tonight because it's good to be reminded about the supernatural truths of the word, amen. Go ahead and share this broadcast. I'm gonna pray and we're gonna dive right into this powerful word of the Lord, hallelujah. Let's get some people on here. Let's start praying together. Let's start praying in the spirit because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's what the word says, it says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I bless your name. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord. The anointing breaks the yoke, God, and that your word is sharp. It's alive. It's active. And it is sharper than a double-edged sword. And we thank you for your word today, Father. As we meditate on the things above, we come into agreement with what your word says and what you have spoken and what your Holy Spirit is speaking and revealing in this hour. I ask you to anoint my lips today, Father. I humble myself before you and I ask you, Lord, to come in great power and revelation. Let the spirit of counsel and wisdom come. Father, I just bless you today. I bless every person watching. Lord, every person that's gonna watch this also on the replay, I pray that this would be a fruitful use of their time, that it would minister to them and that it would bless them for your glory. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord very strong today and I'm just so grateful. I wanna talk to you for a few minutes about the power of our words, the power of agreements, um, the importance and the heaviness of divine contracts and coming into agreement with certain things. Um, and I wanna, I wanna start off by just saying this right at the beginning. Um, there are two paths. It, it really all comes down to this, okay? And so I'm gonna start here with this clear, concise revelation about the roads, the spiritual roads, okay? There is the narrow path that leads to life and few find it. And there is the broad way, the broad path, and many travel on that road. Okay, so I'm gonna start right there with this revelation that is in the word of God and that we are all on a spiritual journey and regardless if people realize it or not, they are on one of two paths. They are either traveling, you are either traveling on the narrow road, the narrow path that leads to life or you are traveling on the broad way that leads to destruction, all right? Very simple, we're gonna break it down. It's very simple. There are two options, the narrow way and the broad way. One of them leads to life and life abundantly, and the other one leads to destruction. Now, on these paths, in this place called life, the earth where we live and where we are on this journey, there are things that happen along the way. And so, you know, first and foremost, if you're watching this message and you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, 
uh, you are on the broad path. You're on the broad way that leads to destruction. And in order for you to get off of that broad path, the one that many travel on, many go and they party and they, you know, they live life, you know, in sin and in reckless abandonment. And, you know, they don't consider wisdom and the right path, the right way. Uh, all you need to do is accept Yeshua. You need to repent of your sins. You need to accept Yeshua as Lord and Savior. And, um, and he will transform your life and then lead you on the narrow path that leads to life. That's first and foremost. Now, for those of you watching that are already believers, you love the Lord and you're walking on the narrow path. It's very important to understand that as you are traveling on this narrow path, the devil, Satan, your adversary, the enemy is going to consistently try to pull you off of that narrow path. Do you understand what I'm saying? He is constantly going to try to distract you, to make you, to try to attempt to make you make decisions that are going to pull you down, pull you away, pull you off, stumble off of the narrow path because he wants you to be delayed. He wants you to go on the Broadway, not on the narrow path that leads to life. Now, there, these things are going to happen as you're on this journey and they can actually, there are many different levels of um, these types of agreements and I would even call them contracts, like spiritual contracts. And it's like some of them might not even be so bad, so to speak. But what will happen is that you have a destiny, you have a calling, you have a purpose, and you know what it is. Many of you know what it is. Some of you are still figuring it out. But for those who do, the Lord has spoken something to you. Things have been prophesied over you. You have a sense in your heart that you're going somewhere. You have a calling, you have a purpose, and you are going on this path towards life, but also to fulfill your calling and your purpose. Now, along the way, People will be sent into your path and they will actually, whether they are, they know it or they don't know it. Sometimes they're aware of it and sometimes they're not, but they can be used of the enemy to try and get you to come into agreement with things that are not connected to your destiny and your calling. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are many things that might appear to be good that are actually a disaster for you and for your calling. And let me explain what I mean. Let me explain what I mean. Satan comes as an angel of light, okay? He doesn't come with a red pitchfork with horns, you know, out of his head telling you, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna break up your marriage, I'm gonna destroy your ministry. No, 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 no. He comes disguised as an angel of light. I have the solution that you're looking for. Let me help you with this. Why don't you try and do it this way? All of these types of things are Satan in disguise, oftentimes, not all the time. That's why you have to test the spirit. In 1 John chapter 4, 1 through 6, it says, test every spirit for not Every spirit is of the Lord. You must test every spirit. Now, let me answer the question to why these types of attacks, these types of seductions are very dangerous and can be destructive for your calling and your destiny. And it is because, hear me on this, hear me on this. It's because somebody can come and whether, listen, whether they mean harm or not, they can come from a soulish perspective, from a, from a place of their own agenda. They might not even be meaning any harm or any bad. They just, you know, they, they really want to get something done and they see that you can help them do that. And so they come and uh, they offer you to do something. But if that is not what God has called you to do, 
If, if God has a complete divine order established for you, a destiny established for you, people that he's called you specifically to partner with and to work with, and you accept a deal or a contract or a position or something of that nature with someone else, although it might be good and it might even be kingdom and actually, you know, there could be a lot of benefits from it. If it's not what the Lord has called you to do, then you are actually in violation of your mandate from heaven. I'm just going to sit here for a minute while that sinks in. Think about this for a minute. I believe, I, I really believe this and, and hear me, hear me when I say this. If you haven't shared this broadcast, go ahead and share it. I think this is going to bless some people. I feel very strongly in my spirit that we are now entering into a new era where the new wineskins have been prepared and are being prepared and the Lord is getting ready to pour out new wine into the new wineskins. Part of the new wine and the new wineskins is going to be a divine alignment with heaven that is so perfect because it is God's perfect plan and perfect will. And you have everything in line and in order, meaning that the body of Christ, the body of Messiah is going to be functioning on a level that we've never functioned before because all of the parts are going to become activated and begin to work together for the glory of God in a way that has never been seen before. I feel in my spirit, and I do not have all the answers. I see through a glass darkly. You know, we prophesy in part, we know in part. And so I'm just sharing the part that I have, that I sense in my spirit, what the Father has shown me. And I know that many others out there have more revelation and more pieces of the puzzle that are so powerful and line up with this. But I really do believe in my spirit that up until this point, I think we have seen pockets and there have been sections and, and some groups and some churches and some messianic congregations and some fellowships that have operated for a time and a season in the glory of the Lord. And, you know, with the all the fivefold moving together, working together, the body edifying one another and, and just really operating in, in the glory and the power. But it's only been very limited. I believe that in this new era, when we're talking about the glory of the Lord rising on his people, okay, the Isaiah 60, when it's talking about the end times, that darkness is gonna cover the earth, gross darkness is over the people, but on you, the Lord will rise and over you will be seen his glory, his glory. And then it says, nations will come towards your light and kings towards the brightness of your rising. I believe this glorious light, the glory of the Lord rises on his people, which is the, the remnant, the purified bride of Christ that's shining and glowing and radiant in the glory of the Lord, in the glory of the Lord. Now, what enables, what enables the bride to shine bright and to be radiant? Daniel 12, 10, many will be purified, made white and refined. The wicked will not understand what's happening, but those who are wise will understand. I'm dropping in here, Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. And I mentioned this actually often on these broadcasts because I feel it's very important for this hour that we live in. It's a scripture for now. We know that the Lord Yeshua is coming back for a pure and spotless bride. He's not coming back for a defiled bride. He's not coming back for a prideful bride. He's coming back for a spotless bride. And so a lot of the impurities are coming to the surface. I'm gonna tie all this back in to the broad way and the narrow path that I opened up this message in, and you're gonna get where I'm going with this in just a minute. But as we are becoming purified, part of the warfare and the intensity of this season and the pressure, the fire that you're going through right now. Many of you are going through fiery trials. I, we just came out of so many 
fiery trials, pressures, warfare, challenges, things that stretch you and, and, and they just challenge you and they challenge your faith and they, they stretch you, but and it's uncomfortable and it's painful. But, but the spirit of God spoke to me and he said, he, I asked him, I said, Lord, why does this feel so yucky? It feels so like uncomfortable. And I could literally feel like something was like coming out, you know, and the Lord spoke to me and he said, son, he said, if you are part of my bride, you will be purified and you will go through this process. Wow. Wow. Glory to God. Come on. Listen, the fire the fire is meant to bring the impurities to the surface, okay? The Lord spoke to me specifically when I asked him. I, I just, I was dealing with these things, you know, that I hadn't felt in so long. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Why am I having these thoughts? Where is it coming from? And the Lord said to me, he said, son, I'm doing a deep, 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 deep work. I'm bringing the dross to the, to the top. You know, I'm bringing the dross out of the silver and I'm removing it. The dross, see, when you put silver in the fire, the dross, the impurities, the black substances, they come to the top when the heat is applied, and then the silversmith cleans off those impurities that are drawn up to the surface, and this process continues until the silversmith is able to see his reflection in the silver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when we go through these periods of time, and you will, I promise you, you will. And that's what the Lord told me. You know, because I was like, Lord, this is very uncomfortable. I don't, I, why am I dealing with these thoughts? Why am I, you know, these, these things, these old things that, that have been gone for so long. And the Lord said, no, 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 son, you listen. Every one of my sheep, every one of my sheep, all that are my bride are going to be purified and there is no way around it. It is through the fire, but I will be with you. He says, I will be with you in the fire. I will be with you in the trials. I will be with you when you go through the deep waters. You will not drown. It will not overtake you. And so I wanna encourage you that when we're going through these fiery trials, it's important that we keep our focus on things above, seated in heavenly places with Christ, as it says in Ephesians, and that we remember that, you know, see, the enemy will come in during these fiery trials and he will actually try to say, oh, look at you, look what you're doing. He'll try to bring condemnation. And see, that's again, a tactic of the enemy. And the Lord is saying, no, 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 that's not what, what's happening at all. It's actually my purification fire. And I just want you to respond. I want you, if there's any areas that I point out and highlight, I want you to acknowledge it. I want you to repent. I want you to renounce. I want you to purify and just move forward, just move forward. And so I wanna encourage you in that. And now this is what I wanna say and tie this in to the narrow path and the broad way. So when you're on the narrow path, you are going to be tempted to depart the narrow path because you are in line with your destiny. And so the things that you have to be on guard from are actually different than the people that are on the broad way. And some of the tactics of the enemy, they're higher level tactics, but he will, if he can't get you to fall backwards, he will try to get you to fall forwards. Let me explain what I mean. In the past seasons, you might have struggled with a certain sin. There was a certain thing that you couldn't quite get past. I mean, you were walking in victory in many areas, but there was just one area. Maybe you, you just couldn't stop gossiping. Or maybe, you know, you're a guy and you just couldn't stop like lusting, you know. Or maybe, you know, you just couldn't stop just having a temper, being angry. And but you're in victory now and God has delivered you. He set you free from that. And now you're walking in victory. Well, now that you're walking in victory, the devil recognizes that he cannot get you to fall into those traps again. 
Okay, so the devil is not stupid. He's, he's very smart. And so he's going to recognize, okay, I can't attack them in this way any longer because they keep passing the test and they're not taking the bait. They're not going for it. So what he will try to do is actually elevate his game and he will begin to try to get you to fall forward. What, is, what do I mean? Oftentimes when things are going really good and there's momentum and, and everything seems to be working together and everything's powerful and God's moving, he will try to just sneak in there. You know, let's say you're going 100 miles an hour and there's 50 different meetings that you have and they're all divine appointments where he's going he's gonna to try to just sneak one of his agents in there that's gonna just present something to you that is very close and it really sounds like good and what, you know, what God is doing, but it's not, it's not, it's a diversion. And it's actually um, going to derail, you know, what God has called you to do. And so if this happens, uh, do not be discouraged. Don't, don't be condemned, don't panic. There's actually a way, a very easy way um, to annul that and just get right back on to the path. And this sometimes will happen with amazing people. Honestly, it's sometimes there will be some incredible men and women of God that are doing amazing, amazing things. And, um, it, it just looks good and it looks right. And you just, you want to do things together because they love the Lord so much and um, you just, you love them, you know, and it, it sounds like the thing and it looks like the thing, but it's not. And, and this is actually an easy thing to fall into uh, when God is, is doing so many big things. And, and I just, I really feel in my heart to share this because, you know, there are some amazing things happening in the kingdom right now. Uh, there's some very blessed movements. People are doing things. God is moving in a holy, a mighty way, a powerful way. And it's time. It's time to press in. It's time to run for the prize. It's time to move and shake for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God. I just, I really feel this strong on my spirit that there is the good way and then there is the God way. And in order for us as the body of Christ, the kingdom army to truly accelerate in the glory and the fullness of God's calling in our lives in this hour, we must be in alignment with his divine plan. There are books and scrolls in heaven that are literally written about you and about your family and about your business and about your ministry and who you're called to partner with and who you're called to work with in this season and the next season and the one after that, all of these things, the Lord is very meticulous. He is very powerful and he's all knowing. And I want to encourage you that this is not the time to just play church and just do things because it looks good and it's a good idea. I want to challenge you today. Those of you that are on the narrow path, spend serious time in prayer and fasting about every partnership that you enter into this new season. Glory to God. I feel the fire on this. The Lord has really been speaking this strong into my spirit. Listen, I really feel that this is a word of the Lord to the body of Christ in this hour. Now, please take this to the Lord. Weigh this Weigh this prophetic word. Test it. But I believe from what we have just walked through, from what the Lord is showing me, from what the Spirit of God is saying. I believe that part of the end time harvest, the glory and the awakening, the powerful move of God that's gonna come is going to be, it's going to come for a few reasons. One, because God prophesied it. Two, he's going to pour his glory out. But three, because it's going to be a purified and prepared bride. And the changing of the guard is going to bring divine alignment with heaven's blueprints. Think about this for a minute. Think about this for a minute. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, think about this, okay? Picture you're driving in a brand new car, all right? A brand new car. And, but on this car, 
you know, the left wheel is like a 20 inch wheel. And then on the right wheel, there's like a 15 inch wheel. And then on the back wheel, there's like a 17 inch wheel. And on the uh, other rear wheel, there's like a, you know, 12 inch wheel. Now you look at the car and it's like a brand new car and it's amazing. But then all of a sudden you look at the wheels and you're like, how is that going to drive? And if you got in the driver's seat and actually tried to drive this car, it would drive horrible. But what happens is all of a sudden you put the, all the right wheels on there, 20 inch wheels that match. All of a sudden you put everything in alignment. That car is going to shoot. It's going to zoom. It's going to zoom. Now, this is what I feel in the spirit is going to happen as the body comes into alignment and begins to work together for the glory of God. Each person is in their assigned position and people are, listen, prophets aren't trying to be pastors and pastors aren't trying to be apostles and apostles aren't trying to be teachers and teachers aren't trying to be, you know, servants and administrators and kingdom financers. You know, except for those in the fivefold and yes, amen, hallelujah for those that operate in the fivefold. And I know there are many that operate in the fivefold, but for the majority of those in the body of Christ, they have an office, they have a gifting, they have an anointing and they have a position and that position is going to be fruitful and bear fruit exactly where they are called to be. So the mouth can't say to the foot, what are you doing? The hand can't say to the ear, what, why are you hearing? You know, we have to work together in unity. And that's what I believe this glorious revival is going to be about. And the way I'm tying all of this in to the narrow path and the broad way is these are those that come into the narrow path and stay on the narrow path and hear what the spirit of the Lord is doing and saying in this hour. Now, when we come into alignment with God's perfect plan, when we literally respond to him and what he is doing, all of a sudden things are going to go at God's speed, God's speed. It's going to be so supernatural. The things that used to take like years are going to take months. The things that used to take months are gonna take days. And it's because the friction is being removed and it's like a well-oiled machine. And so I just wanna encourage you today that I feel in my spirit that a big part of this is as the changing of the guard is taking place, and that's what's happening right now in the body of Christ, there is a changing of the guard. Uh, people are being promoted, people are being demoted, people are being shifted from one country to another, from one area to another. There's a movement of the kingdom that's happening right now. There's a movement. There's a movement. I'm telling you, we've had some of the most powerful prayer meetings we've ever seen in our lives because the Holy Spirit is moving. The kingdom is advancing. Things are shifting. Do not miss this. We are actually in the middle of a corporate fast called the shift. We're two thirds of the way to the end. It's day 14 today. We're going 21 days. It's going to end on February 22nd, 222 according to the word of the Lord. And we are already seeing massive shifts, massive answers to prayer. And I'm expecting major things to happen by the 22nd, 23rd, and then moving onward into March and April and the rest of the year. So I wanna encourage you, do not miss this time. This is the time to fast and pray. It's the time to press into the spirit of the Lord. Do not be lukewarm. Do not, do not be lackadaisical about your assignment of what God has called you to do in this hour. This is the moment. This is the time where the angels are being loosed into the earth realm. This is the time where we are taking dominion. It is the time where the complete victory of the Lord is being established in the earth. This is the time where the walls of Jericho are fi falling down for the glory of God. We are going to see major victories in the spirit and in the natural. And we're going to begin to witness the miracle signs and wonders that Yeshua himself prophesied and promised we would see. It said signs, miracles, and wonders will follow those who believe. And so do you believe, that is my question, do you believe that God is moving in the earth? Are you going to 
bow down to the prophets of Baal? Are you gonna bow down to the religious spirits? Are you gonna give in to the fear of man? Or are you gonna break forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and rise up with a hallelujah and say, you know what? It doesn't matter what's coming upon us because God is with us. And if his God is for us, who can be against us? Come on, I wanna pray and we're gonna shut this thing down for the glory of God, hallelujah. Father, I bless your name. I thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that your bride is being purified in this hour. I worship you, Lord, in this place. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving. You're bringing divine revelation. People right now are being changed into their assigned position as you are bringing the changing of the guard into the earth realm. Lord, it's happening right now. You are giving out new mantles, promotions in the spirit. Those who have been faithful with little are going to be faithful with much. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that this is the time. This is the hour. Lord, that you have promised that we will begin to see the fulfillment of these prophetic words. God, we bless your name and we worship you. I pray for every person right now, right now watching live and on the replay. Father, I bind and I break every curse, every spell, every hindering spirit that's come against them. We bind Jezebel in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we break down every word curse. We break it. We shatter it in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord, that your word is like an earthquake, God. It is sharp, hallelujah, like a double-edged sword. Your word is powerful. It's powerful. And your word is holy. And I thank you, Lord, that your word is powerful. And we meditate on your word today, Lord, as we focus on the things above. Lord, I pray right now that the fire of the Holy Spirit would consume every single person watching this live and on the replay. That the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the King of kings and Lord of lords, would wash every person watching this live and on the replay, that we would be a spotless bride, vessels that are worthy for the honor and the calling that you have placed upon our lives, that we might make your name famous in the earth, Lord Yeshua, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, I believe that you are returning soon. Lord, I believe that you are returning soon. And so may we be about the Father's business. I pray now for the release of the fear of the Lord. Father, I pray that the false gospel would be shattered. Lord, I pray that in this new era, those men and women, those that are watching me right now would rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would be bold and strong and courageous and raise a shout and a cry for the kingdom of heaven. And they would testify about that one, that glorious king named Yeshua. Hallelujah. At which every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess that Yeshua is Lord. Yeshua is Lord. Rebo soto koramayete, sheko ramayande, lebro soto ramayeto labasa ke romanda, rebo soto rebe, rebo soto ramakete lebroso, ramakete lebroso ramashe. Koramanda la brase. I loose the breaker anointing. In the name of the Lord, uh, we call forth by the Spirit of the Most High God right now. Right now, we call forth. We call forth. We call forth those that have been hiding. Come on, those that have been hiding in the caves. Those that have been prepared in the wilderness. Come on, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Some of you are watching and you've been waiting for your time. You've been waiting. You've been asking, when, God, when is it going to be my time? When is it going to be my time? You've prepared me in the wilderness. You've tried me. You've tested me. I've been faithful with little. Oh, Lord, when are you going to call me up? And I'm here to say that some of you, this moment is now, right now, right now. I hear the Holy Spirit say, come forth, arise and shine. Arise and shine, arise and shine, arise and shine. Come on, everybody, begin to pray in the spirit. If you feel led by the spirit, then pray in the spirit because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is freedom, there is freedom. 
Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. Rebo shotono mo satana masete. In the name of Yeshua. Lord, we come to you today and we say you are the King of kings and Lord of lords and we worship you and we honor you and we give you all the glory and all the credit. Father, you are holy and mighty and worthy to be praised. Father, I pray that this day, as we are literally two thirds of the way into the shift, Father, that the atmosphere would begin to shift with holiness, that people's lives would begin to shift out of a sinful nature into a Holy Spirit empowered, holy remnant nature. God, that we would forget the things that lay behind us, God, and we would focus on what is ahead of us. Hallelujah. As Paul said, I forget the things that are behind me and I focus ahead on the prize. Come on, everybody. This is the time. This is the moment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, this day I ask you that if anybody watching me live or on the replay has entered in to any contracts that are not ordained by heaven, any word contracts, agreements, anyone that has come into agreement with a lesser path, um, with, with a plan that was not your plan, Lord, I pray that you would make a way out for them. As it says in your word that you would not allow us to be tempted beyond what we could handle. And when we are tempted, you will provide a way out, a way out so there's a way out. If somebody has entered into a contract, an agreement, uh, something that somebody, a, a false word that somebody spoke over them and they came into agreement with it. Lord, I pray that you would bring into their minds a recollection, the things that are not of you, that were not ordained from heaven and that they would break agreement with those things, with those word contracts, with curses, with anything that was not your perfect will. I just feel this so strong in the spirit. This is now, this is now. I, I feel that it's now, it's not even future. God is doing this right now. He's bringing us into alignment, okay? I wanna, I wanna challenge you right now. Think in your mind, is there anything that has felt off? Did you have a check in your spirit about something? Did you do something that you had a check in your spirit about? Think about this. Think about it for a moment. Is there something, are you, think about all the areas of your life, all the people that are around you, your friends, your business associates, your ministry partners, where you're serving, where you're going. Just feel your spirit. Just feel your spirit. Ask God, ask the Lord, say, Lord, is there anything right now in my life that is in the flesh that's not of your spirit? Is there anything that I did or am doing that is not your plan for me? Lord, reveal it to me, show it to me in the name of Yeshua. This is a time that is very important for us, for you to be in alignment, to be in alignment. And so I just wanna encourage you um, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. It's very important that you are conscious and aware of the things that you're speaking, the contracts that you're coming into, the agreements that you're making, and just make sure that you are in holy divine alignment with what God has called you to do. I really feel this strongly in my spirit. I want to submit this to you to pray about, to test the spirit, to weigh and take this to prayer. And, and I, I would encourage you, I would encourage you to really sit with this. Don't breeze through this, like take a few days and really pray. And now I want to just make a disclaimer. You don't need to be suspicious. You don't need to start being suspicious or you know, confused, that's, that's not God. Just, just get into the presence of the Lord and just ask the Lord, is there anything out of alignment in my life? Is there anything that I'm doing that wasn't ordained by you that was just my own way, my own flesh? 
and he will show you. And then once he does, just renounce it. He'll give you the grace to change it. He'll give you a way out of it. And you'll, you'll, you know, if you discover that there's a path that you're on and it's the wrong path, and, and I can almost guarantee you that many of you are actually going to discover that there might be one path or more that you're on that might not be the one that God wants you on. And so um, there's nothing, there's no condemnation. It's just a time of realignment. And uh, praise God for his grace and his mercy. His grace is sufficient. Amen. His grace is sufficient. And so um, I just want you to be mindful of that because this is the moment. This is the time that we are going to see the glory of the Lord rise on his people. And it's important that you are in your assigned position. You don't want to be out of alignment. You want to be in alignment with God's plan for your life. And so that's my prayer for you. Let me pray for you and bless you. Father, in Yeshua's name, I bless every person watching right now live and on the replay. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the revelation that you're releasing in this hour. Lord, I pray that you would help every person watching this live and on the replay be prepared and in position uh, to where you have called them to be. And Lord, I pray that for myself and my family and for Radiant Israel. Lord, we want to honor you in every single thing that we do. We want your perfect will. Father, we pray in Yeshua's name that anything that is not in alignment, you would bring into your divine alignment what is written in the books and the scrolls of heaven. Father, that's what we want. We want your perfect will. We don't want a lesser path. We don't want to do things that are just good ideas. We want God ideas. We want your perfect plan. And so I pray that for us, for my family, for Maggie, for the kids, for our friends, for Radiant Israel, and for every person watching. Lord, I pray this right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. And I believe, Lord, with all my heart that you are already loosing your angels that are going to bring divine assistance. They're going to help in these transitions and these realignments. I prophesy this in the name of Yeshua. I feel the spirit of prophecy coming and I release this now. I release this. It says in your word, God, that whatever we bind will be bound and whatever we loose will be loosed. And so, Father, I loose the angels, the angels, the ministering angels and, and those angels that will assist your bride, the body of Christ, Father, in getting back into holy alignment with you. I pray that now they would be released now, now in Yeshua's mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He's good. Amen. Amen. It says in the word, amen. Amen. Where two or more gathered, there he is in our presence. So there's almost 500 on here. So he's most certainly in our presence. And uh, we bless the name of the Lord. He is good. He is worthy. I want to thank you guys for your time. And uh, I'm praying for you. And I'm excited about what God has in store for this year. We have some big announcements that are coming very, very soon. Um, as far as us personally, we've just been really uh, taking time to seek the Lord. We've been very, you know, methodical in making sure that we're in right alignment with what God is asking us to do. And the reason I was able to bring you this word is because we walked it out first. We actually walked through this. A lot of things were in perfect, holy alignment. According to the word of the Lord, there were a few things that were not in alignment and we had to, you know, kind of ask the Lord and then release it and then understand and then backtrack and then get right back on the path. And so glory to God. He is good. He's faithful. And so I'm excited because I know that he is going to do this for you, the same thing he did for us. And um, praise God, there's a lot of challenges with getting established in a, in a new country and a new territory, but God is good. He's opening amazing doors and we're just grateful. We're grateful. I thank you for all your prayers and support and Thank you for those that have sent letters and, and, and gifts. Uh, man, you guys are amazing, so encouraging. We're like just so blessed by the warm welcome that we've received here in Tennessee and in the United States. I, I wanna let you know that we honor you and we bless you. We thank you uh, for your support and your prayers. It just means so much. And uh, amen, amen, guys. I'm excited, I'll, I'll be on soon, but again, we are two thirds into the shift. 
Uh, seven more days to go, eight more days to go uh, to 222. And if you haven't yet joined the Daniel fast that we're on, you can join right now. Even if you didn't do the first 14 days, you can join us right now because the Lord showed me that it would start as a snowball and it was like going down a hill. But by time we got to the end, the snowball was going to be massive because people were just going to join every day. Somebody else would hear about this fast and say, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And then we were going to reach a critical mass in the spirit where God was just going to break down some things because of the humility and the unity in the spirit of nobody trying to do things for themselves, but just really saying, okay, this is a word of the Lord and we're going to partner with it. So if you want to join, please do join us and uh, let's just pray in the spirit. Let's trust God for a major shift and we're already seeing it. Love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Take care. Oh,